Hello and welcome back. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. Um, here in the next video clip, this is clip number four of seven. Uh, we've already uh, made an attempt to slot the screw head, broken screw head, on this uh, re uh, broken implant retrieval case. So we've done a little bit of both. We've actually uh, did a little bit of slotting, extended the slot, uh, the overall length of the slot and we've also honed a number of instruments uh, one of the instruments uh, that was used the metal was just a little too soft uh, as far as uh, at uh, using it so what you'll see right now is the slot itself and now we're putting in and measuring uh, a flat driver from another implant company uh, and we'll try to custom make or customize the tip of the driver itself. Um, now there's been some suggestion that the the screwdriver itself, the flat screwdriver itself, uh, needs to be of a very strong, almost like a tungsten type of st metal. Um, so here we're measuring again the the diameter of the slot. The slot was created with a quarter round burr and uh, was slightly enhanced with a 33 and a half uh, inverted cone. I'll try to square up the walls of the slot itself. Now we're going back in and re-enhancing that slot and just drying it off. And part of the whole process is you just have to be very patient, you know, with your your case. And here I am now with the the driver itself and I'm going to use um, a burr, a diamond burr, to, to change the the overall width of that tip of that driver. Like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of both. I don't really want to end up with a square driver. I prefer to have have it still flat. And um, this is the other instrument that I used, um, and I'm comparing the widths now of what I used in the past and, and trying to go with a stronger metal so why not just take the implant driver itself and take a fine diamond with some water and just gonna go ahead and hone the tip of the driver so I'm working against the flat end trying to reduce the overall uh, width I believe this driver belongs to a Camelog kit. So you can grab some instruments from other kits, see whatever works uh, when you have a challenge case like this. With a microscope, uh, you can do so much more. Um, try not to think that you can handle a case. And, uh, you know, a lot of cases are going to be easy to remove the screw uh, with an Explorer. Some are using cotton uh, in a reverse reverse mode, um, but if it's frustrating, I would su highly suggest just stopping at that point and refer the patient out. Refer to to someone that has a microscope. Um, right now, we're trying to get more restorative dentists to use microscopes in the industry. Um, I, from what I understand, I was speaking to a student that was attending a Midwest school. And they're also using scopes now um, in the undergraduate departments. He's a second year student, and they're using microscopes as well as uh, not only for root canal therapy, but they're using microscopes for restorative. So it's good to see that. It's good to see that it's finally going into the, uh, the dental schools, and hopefully every student will have a microscope to use in their second year. Uh, of 
with dentistry. We use a microscope in our pre-dental class at FAU and uh, everyone seems to be doing quite well and adapting to its use. It just takes time. I would say for me the learning curve for a microscope was about two weeks. So here we are back and adjusting the slot. We're going to make the slot a little wider so that we can come right back in with the use of our driver. We're about halfway through the video right now and uh, the next video is I'm going to show you about four minutes of working the slot again and the ratchet and trying to use that flat driver again. So a lot of back and forth right now and yeah, you just have to be just have to be patient with the with with the uh, with the procedure. In my office, I have a total of five dental microscopes. Um, one of which I borrow for the school. I usually use one over at the uh, at Florida Atlantic University when I teach on Fridays. And So we're looking again to go in now with the driver. And the key is to push as hard as you can down to try to get as much contact of metal to metal as you can and then make the turn to the left so it's counterclockwise. If you don't push down hard on the driver itself, it'll slip and then you'll end up just uh, removing metal from the slot and uh, that would just make it counterproductive so um, there's no device that can actually press this then you just have to use your thumb and press it in place Okay, another attempt made. See, I'm kind of vibrating it in place, and I'll make the turn. And uh, it's very difficult, very difficult to uh, to move this to get it to budge. <laughs> and you know, not only do you have to have patience, but you're the patient in the chair has to agree to just, you know, it does take time. You might be here for an hour, maybe two hours. Here we are extending it already to probably around our third hour. And uh, not giving up, though, not giving up. Here it's grabbing a little bit. And I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, is that screw turning? And you can feel the driver is kind of stuck in the slot. And... Uh, so now we'll have to, you know, check it. And you can see the slot again. Now I'm just checking to see if there's been any movement. And I can still... Actually, it's it's there's been a little bit of movement, so we've got something going on here. We do definitely have some movement, and it did take us a little while. We finally, you can see the lip inside now. You see it reflecting light. That little lip inside, and so maybe we can zoom in on that. Actually, we're going to go ahead with the driver again. <laughs> and try to go back and forth a little bit, lock it in and turn. And what's probably preventing it from coming up right now, now I'm going back and forth, is there's the, the top threads are marred. And so it won't just come straight out. It won't just move, you know, in reverse mode and, and come out. 
So another attempt with the driver. So it's flat slot to slot and uh, flat driver to the slot. Now we're just turning it to see if it would continue to show movement, which is wonderful. So slotting helped. It got it to move, but the problem is is uh, it's not coming out. It's a little frustration right now. We're kind of rethinking our technique. Actually, the patient also has a background in machine parts and, and uh, also understands exactly what we're going through. And he's also offering some advice, uh, which is unusual to see from a patient. And but because he has a machine background, he understands how to remove screws from uh, machines and and how to rethread. Uh, I was blessed uh, having that knowledge. So we need to continue and uh, try to work it back and forth. Um, it's obvious uh, that at times it gets a little frustrating. Uh, you're there, you're seated with the patient, your assistant is seated there, and everybody's, you know, looking on with the video as you are. And so a lot of this telecast here, a lot of the videos that I create, um, you know, in, in real time is also viewed by the, uh, uh, the dental assistant. And also in this case, we have the representative of, one of the representatives of Keystone that's actually um, talking with us and looking on through the, the video monitor. So it's interesting these cases are are what they are and uh, they're not easy. They call for a lot of uh, patience and um, perseverance. The, uh, the representative did come with her uh, her drivers um, many of them are made to fit the top of the screw so we continue to use what we had and we're going to continue to to make our adjustments the next video clip will include us working the slot a little bit more but we'll also see some signs of movement again alright so hang in there this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo uh, I'm gonna pick this up on the next video clip we're only another six minutes away from showing the finale here. All right, take care. We'll see you soon.